wasn't even gonna say nothing about this, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. <clears throat> um, I've been to a couple Diddy parties. Now, I'm risking a lot by saying this because I know as soon as I say that, all, all the assumptions are gonna come in and all the, and if I don't say evil things were taking place, then I'm covering for them. And if I do say evil things were taking place, then I'm one of them ones like, yeah, Lecrae, expose it, expose it. You know what I'm saying? And I've been to lots of parties. I've been to Jamie Foxx, I've been with Snoop, T.I., like, I've been to lots of places. Um, here's what I'll say. There are people who will test you. There are people who will see how far your limits are. And if you're willing to take a step, then they'll take two. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this is kind of what I had expressed on previous videos about these uh, they proclaim to be that they're Christian artists. They always want to be identified as a Christian artist, Christian rapper. But however, their, their lifestyle goes against Christ. These are the very ones that the Bible talks about. Praise me with their lips. The Jesus Christ says you praise me with your lips, but their hearts are far from me. Um, the things that he brings up. And if you see the whole video, I'm not going to show the whole thing. Uh, but the things that he's, he expressed, you know, he tried to use scripture. And he's, this, 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 this is the thing that gets me about these gospel artists. They don't know the Holy Spirit. They don't know the word of God. They take the word of God and they twist it. This is exactly what Jesus Christ accused the Pharisees of. See, a lot of these artists, they want to call Christians that hold the word of God up to what they're doing. They call those Christians religious. They call us religious. However, the religious Pharisees that Jesus was talking about, that Jesus was dealing with, were the ones that knew the Old Testament scriptures, but they twisted it. That's why he kept calling them hypocrites. All right. Because they kept trying to hold people accountable to the law when they themselves were not keeping the law. And so that's what these Christian artists do. These, these, I'm, when I say Christian artists, I'm using that term lightly because they are calling themselves Christian artists. So that's what these artists do. They take the word of God and they twist it in order to do what they want to do. And I say that because on this whole, on, on the video, the, the, the full video, he tries to say Psalms chapter one. Now, Psalms chapter one, he says, you know, he, he says things like, well, don't, don't be in the seat of the scornful. In other words, right when he was just talking about how somebody will test you to see how far you, you can go. He tried to say that was connected to Psalms chapter one. Don't be in the seat of the scornful. Don't be, don't sit in the seat of the scornful. Meaning don't, don't go that far with them. And that's a, that is a complete misinterpretation of the scripture. Because if he was really applying Psalms chapter 1, he wouldn't have been in there with sinners in the first place. And that's what I say that these guys, all they want is the world's approval. That's why they always come against the church about everything. They all, even though all their counselors is in the church or, or they, they call themselves Christian rappers or Christian artists. But they constantly come against the church. So, but they will never come against what these secular artists are doing. They never come against these parties. See, he was going to these parties and he was mentioned, and it, it's not just him. It's others like him. You know, uh, he said he went, you know, to Jamie Foxx, Snoop Dogg, and all, what are you doing there? You know what these guys are about. Why? Be, he's there because the Bible, and I love this, this parable that Jesus Christ gave, when he talked about the seed and the sower, that these are the ones because of the deceitfulness of riches and the cares of this world, the word of God is choked out of them and it's choked out of them because they don't know what the word of God says about their behavior. But those who do and hold them and hold the word of God up to what they're doing and calling them out, they can't stand that because they want what the devil gives his children. And for somebody who says that they are a Christian rapper, a Christian musician, to say that they went to these 
Diddy parties and everything. And you know, it, without all the other stuff that went on that he that that they're accusing, you know, Diddy of or whatever. But the fact that you the, the the moment you step foot on that ground, you know good and well what kind of music is going to be playing, how the women are going to be dressed, how the men are going to be conducting themselves, and what type of a uh, uh, demonic atmosphere is going to be set for those parties. The moment you walk in on it and that, and, and this is what these, you know, uh, gospel artists try to always say, well, you got to be light in the darkness. Listen, this is exactly what Satan did. Satan would take one scripture and try to use it against Christ. Okay. So what these gospel artists try to do is they try to take one scripture and try to use it against people of the body of Christ to try to get them to 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 to, uh, to uh, downplay what they were doing, but see the only person that does stuff like that is the devil. He takes scripture and twists it in order to try to get you to embrace sin. That's what he did against Jesus Christ. He told Christ, "Listen, why don't you throw yourself off a cliff?" Didn't God say He was give His angels charge over you? Didn't He say that His angels will lift you up? Satan took the scripture and twisted it to try to get Christ to do something disobedient to the God, to the Father. That's exactly what these Christian artists are doing. These self-proclaimed Christian artists are doing. And so they try to say they're being light and darkness. No, no, you don't go in. You don't see Christ or his disciples ever going into a place that worshiped false gods and goddesses and just dwelt amongst the people, dwelt amongst sinners. All right. So you don't see that. And so what they're trying to do is trying to say you got to be light in the darkness. No, that's talking about everyday life. That's talking about on your job. That's talking about on, on you know, your daily walk, taking care of your affairs and everything like that. And your, and your daily walk, not going into strip clubs, not going into uh, crack houses where the crack people are at, just shooting up and everything. And you just sitting in there going right along with them. Not going into some ditty party or just some nightclub and you just in there mingling and mixing with them. I guarantee if you was really a, a follower of Jesus Christ and you you went in there, you would get the microphone and start preaching the gospel and calling them to repentance. But you know what? You ain't going to do that because you want to fit in with them. That's being lukewarm and going into that place like that. So these guys, and I'm getting ready to get into this video. But these guys are liars and deceivers and they are full-blown hypocrites because they want what the world has. And that's what Jesus Christ, well, that's what the word of God warned against. It says friendship with the world is hatred towards God. So in actuality, they're carrying around Christian titles, but they're showing hatred towards God because they'd rather be yoked up with the world. Let's tune into the video. Okay, people of God, I want to... Uh jump into this uh particular topic um you saw the title of the video please excuse the glare from my glasses i gotta do some reading uh because these are things that i felt the holy spirit was giving me on this particular topic uh and how it relates to you know what the word of god is saying um there's some examples i'm gonna bring up and some things that uh one of the the things i want you to pay attention to is on a previous video i dealt with how these, you know, Christian rappers are a part of the whole emasculation of men, you know, with the way that they're doing their hairstyles and all this other stuff. So, and the ones that, have, when I'm talking about Christian rappers, I'm talking about the ones that are doing the things that they're doing. Just like when I, you know, minister or, or share the word of God about, you know, what's happening in some ministries. It's not everybody. It's just the ones that are doing it. And the ones that are doing it are the ones that line of fire because they're going against the word of God. Um, <clears throat> something that uh, I see happen is that it's just not, it's not just Christian rappers. It's also the, you know, uh, gospel music industry. You know, you see what's happening. Uh, a lot of them are African American. And it just seems that it's just been a common th uh, uh, trend for a lot of African American and Christian or gospel artists that call themselves Christian or gospel artists are constantly crossing the line over going against the word of God while claiming Christ at the same time. Uh, but it's, this ain't no, you know, race thing or anything like that, but it's just something that I, I, I've, I've observed over the years. And, uh, now you see these 
self pro these pro self proclaimed gospel artists Kirk Franklin, Maverick City, uh, Kiki Sheard, uh, and the, the 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 other guy who wants to you know be like Lil Nas X who was struggling with his sexual sexuality that was part of Maverick City. You know they're all on this Glorilla album. You know a uh, a uh, 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 Jezebel. They're on the album with the Jezebel. Any woman that's trying to cause, you know, uh, 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 men to stumble and fall and be half naked and everything, and whether it's her, Meg Thee Stallion, Cardi B, what, all of these women, the ones that's coming up, you know, the sexy red, whatever, burgundy red, whatever, all these women that's coming up doing the stuff, these are Jezebels. Because what did Jezebel do? They, she specifically uh, led the service of God into sexual morality. As a matter of fact, it was the plan of the devil speaking through the prophet Balaam that said, hey, put women in front of the, the, the men of Israel. That will get them to stumble and fall. And so something I want you to always remember, whenever these artists come up, come out and start saying how, why they joined a collaboration with these secular artists, <clears throat> why they got on their album, they never say the Holy Spirit led them to do it. They don't even show the script. They can't even quote scriptures that show that it's always going to be something emotional attachment, something about an accolade, something about, you know, uh, 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 reaching reaching the loss. And, and, and it's a complete lie. It's a complete lie. That that girl, Glorilla, she grew up in a church. that Her name was Glory Hallelujah. That her, her mother them gave her. And she did an interview saying, well, that's what church the people in the church call me. But she don't even want to be called that no more. All right. And so these artists that are hooking up with sinners to collaborate with them, this is all about money and fame. They want that clout. They want what these sinners have. This is the same thing that I believe the Psalms, I think, I think it was Psalms 37, when he said, I looked and see the, the strength of the of, 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 of the wicked and how they were they were strong, they were getting away with all this other stuff, and then he finally had to, you know, come to the senses and says, and says, then, look, I started looking and seeing that the wicked were no more. So if you want to know what the, you know, when Jesus Christ talked about, you know, narrow is the pathway of righteousness, there are a few that find, find it, but broad is the way of the path of destruction. And there are many that enter in. This is that broad way of broad path of destruction, what I'm going to talk about on this video. These artists, like a Kirk Franklin, Kiki Sheard, uh, <clears throat> Maverick City, and I forgot the other guy's name, but you see it on the picture, because um, I got them underlined. These guys, Lecrae, you know, all these different ones that are doing and collaborating with these secular artists, they're showing you the broad, the, the path, the broad path that leads to destruction. If you want to know who will stand before Christ and why Jesus Christ says there'll be many that, that stand before him and say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we do marvelous works in your name? This is exactly what Christ was talking about. What these artists are doing. What these artists are doing. Lecrae just made a, a new song a few a weeks ago uh, with this, uh, I think it's a Jamaican rapper on there. And this guy has a song called uh, King Tut where he's full of profanity and cussing. And he brought that album out just a few weeks before he recorded with Lecrae. So now you got these artists putting cussing artists, oh, not now, but they've been doing it, putting cussing artists on their songs and saying that they're reaching souls for the kingdom of God. So if you're reaching them for the kingdom of God, are you going to tell them to quit listening to the artists that you just exposed them to? See, there's got to be a separation. So anyway, uh, uh, I felt the Lord gave me these scriptures and gave me these different things to, to write. And I'm going to do a lot, you know, some reading because I don't want the video to go, go real long. Sometimes these videos, I look back, I'm like, man, I don't even know if I listened to that for two hours or for oh, four hours. So just be respectful of your time. I want to try to shorten this up a little bit. <laughs> but these Christian artists are... Are, are huge uh, compromisers. These Christian rap artists, if you want to see what compromise is like, lukewarmness is like, 
these Christian rap artists and, and these gospel musicians uh, are, are, are showing you exactly what it means to be lukewarm, exactly what it means to be those that Jesus says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. That's exactly what they're doing. They're doing exactly what Jesus Christ said is going to happen, especially in the last days. So uh, one of the things that um, we have to look at is that these Christian rap artists, they're the image of compromise. They are the very image of what it means to compromise. And compromising means that you know what the truth says. You got to so you suppress the truth, like Romans chapter one says, suppressing the truth. In order for them to do what they want to do, they have to suppress the truth of the word of God. And I will get, I will say this, that many of them, see, they know how to rap about Christ. They know how to put lyrics together. They can rap about green beans because they just know how to put words together and make it put a nice beat to it. And all of a sudden you want to eat green beans because of the way they rapped about it. All right. They can put that stuff together. But the thing is that when the beat is off, when the beat is and the music stops, you really hear what comes out of their mouth and it goes against the word of God. So you cannot get caught up in a person's musical ability and their talent <clears throat> and thinking that, oh, this is going to draw you close to Christ. No, because they themselves are not walking with the Lord. A lot of these Christian rap artists, they don't even study the word of God. There's no way you could be a praying man or a praying woman and study the word of God and then turn around and do the things that they're doing. There's no way. These guys don't even have the Holy Spirit in them. They're just flowing off of talent. And knowing how to put uh, a scripture to some of the things that they're saying. Or know how to rap and put words together. But it's not anointed. There's no anointing in it. Because they're going off their own ability and talent. Alright. Now I want, you, I, want, I, want, I want to read something to you. <laughs> And these are the things that the Lord started, you know, uh, showing me and, and, and bringing up in my heart. It says, wherever hip hop goes, it brings forth the fruits of death, destruction, rebellion, and it alters the atmosphere and the image of those who follow it. Now, if you go to any mall, any shopping center that is pretty much, you know, well to do and it looks nice and everything. But all of a sudden, when you start seeing these hood stores. Back in the day, they used to sell these hood DVDs and hood videotapes and all this other stuff and bring all these different urban stores in there. And what what comes along with it? All these Afrocentric artifacts, which is full of, 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 of witchcraft and, and idol worship and everything. All those little images, African mask and all this other stuff. Jamal Bryant got one on his, you know, set where he interviews people. Uh, got a full-fledged, you know, demon image, a demon idol on his set, and nobody says nothing about it. But anyway, they, they whenever they bring this stuff in, all of a sudden, that atmosphere, it deteriorates. That mall starts deteriorating. Whatever that shopping center is, it starts deteriorating. Why? Because look at the type of uh, people that begin to come out there. Look at the images that starts coming out there. It draws in rebellion. It brought it draws in destruction. All of a sudden, violence starts breaking out more and more. All of a sudden, death starts happening. That's why every time you see these block parties and these, you know, so-called, you know, rally peace in the streets and everything, what do they do? They play that demonic music in that area, in that community. And what follows after that? Somebody gets shot. A fight breaks out. All of a sudden, people are running for their lives, and they don't, they don't know what's happening. But that's what the hip-hop culture is. Look at all the rappers that are out in it. I mean, rock and roll culture the same way. Look at what, hap what happens. Look at the images that they're projecting. Now, you got them. They wearing the dreads. They wearing the, uh, the pants sagging. They walk around with the shirts off and stuff. They walk around with masks on. Now you got youth walking around in 90 degree weather with a hoodie on and still wearing the mask. All right. And so look at because of look at what they're listening to. That's the that's that culture. That's that spirit behind hip hop that is 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 leading them down a pathway of destruction. But the sad part is that you got the Christian rap artists taking their cues from these secular artists. 
Now the Christian rap artists are out there getting tattoos. Now they got their their heads, you know, half braided and twisted up. Now the same way that the secular artists got their hair is up hair up in buns. Now the Christian rap artists got their hair up in buns, looking like with with, with the women hairstyles. So you have to ask yourself: well, Is this really of the Holy Spirit? Because everything that these Christian rap artists are doing are mimicking exactly what the world is doing. Because they want to be like them, this is why they collab with them on their albums. Because they want to, they want to mimic, you know, what they see the secular artists doing, so they can be like them, have the clout like them, have the fame like them, and still try to hold on and claim Christ. And you can't do that. All right. It says, just look at how people are transformed in their images that have embraced hip hop, including so-called Christian rappers. Look at the images. Look at how they're looking. If the if the secular rap artists, you, you know, they out there showing their house, they showing what kind of car they drive. Now look what Christian rap artists are doing. They showing the kind of car they drive. They showing the kicks they got on. They showing that they driving them. They got a Tesla, a brand new Tesla vehicle on their video now. They got to show what they have. See, this is all. That's all. Boastfulness in vain. What is the purpose of a Christian rapper showing what kind of video, what kind, what kind of vehicle they got? I guarantee, if it, if it was a Chevy Impala, you gonna show that. If it was a, a little Chevy Malibu or a Honda Sonata, are you gonna show that? You gonna show that video? Are you gonna show that that that, that uh, vehicle? No, you got to show the Tesla, you got to show the Lamborghini, you got to show the Benz, you got to show you know uh, the, the 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 Range Rover. You're doing exactly what these secular artists are doing. You're mimicking them. All right? This is what Psalms chapter 1 is talking about. Do not walk in the pathway of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Okay? You don't follow what the wicked are doing. All right? So, what, what, this, what Christian rap artists are doing now is just like what's happening in Revelation, in the book of Revelation, when it talks about the harlot. They're playing the harlot like the woman on the beast in Revelation. The beast would devour her. This is why these Christian artists record songs with the game. I think somebody, uh, I forgot the guy, the gentleman's name. Shout out to you. The one that told me about how D1, this, this Christian rap artist named D1, you know, he goes on a breakfast club and everything, talking about hip hop, talking about the secular music industry and everything. And he tries to call him out, call him out. And I always tell you, you can't come against the demons you're in covenant with. But anyway, come to find out, this guy recorded a song with this gangster. He's a, I think he's a, he's a part of the, 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 the blood gang uh, named The Game. And this dude is a hardcore gang member and everything, but you recorded a song with him. And then you're going to go on Breakfast Club and try to call out Christian hip. You're going to try to call out hip hop, the hip hop culture. And you recording a song with the game. And then they did an interview with this guy, D1. And he was trying to talk about how, how he had an influence on this guy called the game because he didn't cuss on this. That's the first time he didn't cuss in his whole rap career. A bunch of foolishness. Absolutely. Again, every time these artists try to condone what they're doing, they never say the Holy Spirit led them to do it. Just like when I talk about them Greek returns and sororities, these people never say the Holy Spirit led them to join it. Because he's not. This is their flesh and their carnal desires doing that. All right? And so they're playing, they're being just like that harlot that sat on the beast. And the Bible says God was going to allow those kings to devour the harlot, to destroy her. Because she wanted to ride on their wickedness. And she was just willing to give herself over to any. That's what a harlot does. You know, they give themselves over to any man, whatever, come by, anything that's going to get them to fit in. That's what these Christian rap artists are doing. They are mirroring the harlot. And they're riding the beast of that hip-hop music industry. And what's going to happen is those secular artists, because they think they're reaching them. That's the, They're under deception. They think they're reaching them. But what these guys are going to do and these women are going to do is they're going to turn and blast those Christian artists because they like, how are you going to come against me and you and, and, and you uh, and you record with me? You weren't saying that when we was making that making that money when I was giving you those ten thousand dollars for you to record a song with me. You weren't saying that then. See, now they can expose them and call them out. That's what happened with the whole Kimberell situation. Remember that? 
She was trying to, if you in homosexuality in 20, was it 2019, you going to die in 2019. All of a sudden it came out that she got homosexuals all in her, uh, uh, you know, prepping her for her show and for her concerts, working on her staff and all this other stuff in her ministry. Yeah, all that stuff and they exposed them. Riding the back of that beast. And that beast is going to turn around and destroy the harlot. All right. <laughs> so this is why they record songs with the game. They're glad that Kendrick Lamar mentioned them on their on on, on their uh, on his cussing song. I, I did that on the last video and stuff. How they also happy that Kendrick Lamar mentioned them on mentioned Lecrae and D One on their on his songs on a, a song full of profanity and cussing, and, and you happy about it? All right. It says, "How can you teach Christ but expose your audience to the enemies of Christ on your songs? Are you going to tell those youth?" To not listen to the artists you expose them to. The Bible says God was going to allow the beast to attack the harlot. The secular artists will call out the Christian rap artists because they know how they are behind the scenes. And the secular artists do not see the need to repent when the Christian artist is joining them on their songs for pay. Why, why would these secular artists need to change? If they can get a if they can get a Christian artist on the album with them, what do you you just it, 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 what happens is that when you get a Christian to go along with what you're doing, that brings validation. If you're in sin, you got Christians going along and being on your movies and on your cussing movies and stuff, and you got Christians going along being on being on your uh, secular you know uh, rap album and cussing rap album and stuff. That gives validation. That brings validation. That's like, you know, years ago I saw this church. They, they, was, they were having a funeral for a, a woman who was a, in a, a political arena. And at this church, they had uh, Louis Farrakhan get up on a pulpit. At a church, well-known church, big church. Got on the pulpit. Said some things about Jesus Christ and everything. No one, I mean, people, I mean, they were saluting him and everything. So now he, he's going to feel like he's okay. He, he thinks he's okay. Hey, I go in, I go into churches and preachers and they, and they give me validation. All right. That's one of the things the devil always does is try to get the Christian to bow down because if we can do that, that brings validation to the things taking place in the earth. What did Margaret Sagan do when she wanted to push the whole Planned Parenthood agenda? When I got black pastors, what does the LGBTQ do to try to help push their, their agenda? Connect with ministries, connect with churches that embrace them because it brings validation. All right. So you cannot speak against something that you're validating. All right. Now, these are the three questions. Anytime, and I, I, please share this. If you know D1, if you know Lecrae, you know, whoever, whatever, if, if there's somebody that you know that's trying to be a, a Christian rapper, whatever, send them this video. Because these are these are three questions that, that they will not answer. All right? And again, I'm talking about the ones that's out there doing this stuff. So if I'm dropping names stuff, it's because they're out there doing this stuff. They're doing it in the open. All right? Look at these questions. And this, these questions come out of... Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse uh, chapter 6, 14 through 16. These are the three questions we won't, we won't answer because they never answer this on the interview. They never, you know, of course, the, 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 the host of the interview is not going to ask them because they ain't even saved. On a breakfast club, you going on a breakfast club and you, you, you claim you're a Christian, what you going on that show for? You got somebody that calls themselves a God in front of you, but you 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 gonna blast the church, but you don't want to you don't want to speak against somebody that's calling themselves a God and sitting right across from you. You're a coward. That's because you are a coward. All right. Anyway, three questions. What does it mean when it says "come out from among them"? That's question number one. What does it mean when it says "come out from among them"? If you're saying you we're light in the darkness, but the Bible says "come out from among them." <clears throat> Come out from among them Diddy parties, Jamie Foxx parties, Snoop Dogg parties. Come out from among these, you know, these perverted, uh, 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 <clears throat> some of these, you know, gospel awards shows that you know it's all kind of perverted stuff going on at them after parties. He says come out from among them. All right. That's what I mean when they try to twist the scriptures because the Bible don't contradict itself. 
what happens is that they're trying to twist the scripture to suppress the truth so they can do what they want to do. Also, question number two, what does it mean when it says friendship with the world is hatred towards God? What does that mean? What does it mean when it says what fellowship does a believer have with a non-believer? That book right there, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 6, verse 14 through 16, answer them three questions. And you watch how they flip flop and, you know, or, or they're going to try to divert from that and try to quote another scripture thinking to try to make the scriptures look like they're contradicting each other. All right. The rappers say that they are being light, but the Bible says that light has no fellowship with darkness. So what does it mean to be a God fearing father then? You, you see these, these guys, what they do is while they're out touring for days or or every other week then who's being a, a godly uh, father figure in their home while they're gone? See, these guys, and, because, and I say guys because you, you rarely see any female uh, uh, Christian rap artists and stuff, what they do is they, they try to say that they're ministers of the gospel. They're reaching the lost and everything. However, they're not even being parent. They're not even being a good father at the home to their own children. They're not because they're not there. Because they're too busy trying to, you know, make money doing all these tours and doing all this other different stuff. And they, they, they're not even parenting their own children. That's why they don't speak about fatherhood. They don't speak about being a being a father, being a godly uh, a father uh, before their children. Or godly husband to their spouse. See, you always got to watch when someone is just always just focused on ministry, ministry, ministry. But they never address what's going on at home in their own marriage or, or, or how they work or how they train their children up in the Lord. They don't bring that stuff up. It's all about, okay, Jesus and God and, and the ministry and everything. Because if they show what's really happening in, in their home, then all of a sudden what, what, what happens is years down the line, they go on a Ellen DeGeneres show. They go on an Oprah show. They go on these secular shows and they start talking about how, they just let, you know, the ministry take hold of them and they they, they miss so much time being a, a, a parent, being a father to their children, being a, a being a husband, you know, to their to their wife. Then all of a sudden they start coming out because, of, you know, there's such a pool when you're doing this type of music, when you're doing this for the for the church. There's such a pool of it and, and, and how I allowed it to consume me. They always making an excuse because of the decision they made. They chose to go after the fame, the notoriety. As a result, everything else suffered that they were responsible for. All right? Those three questions. Now, this is something else that, are, that the Lord gave me right now. Christian rap artists are harboring the same spirit of the hip-hop culture by being rebellious and refuse correction, rejecting the authority of Scripture and exchange it for the culture of hip-hop. They refuse being a part of a local assembly and embrace the emasculated image the, the secular rap artists exalt. Many of these Christian rap artists grew up without a father, just like these hip-hop artists did. And because those issues are not resolved in Christian rap artists, it is reproducing its image in Christian rap artists. The image of... Uh, you know, the emasculation image, the emasculated image, these these men wearing their, their hairstyles just like women. All right. They are basically being the edited version of secular artists. And that's what Christian rap. That's what Christian rap has become. It's just an edited version of what the secular artists are doing. If the secular artists making drill and trap music, also you got Christian drill and trap music. If the secular artists are are altering their voices and stuff when they're singing and everything, now you see all they they get they don't even they're not even using their 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 uh their normal voice. They're altering it. Now all of a sudden the Christian rap artists are doing. They're trying to stay up to beat with what the secular artists are doing. And so when they're doing that, they're doing exactly what Aaron did. He gave he gave the people what they wanted because of the pressure of the people. He wanted to please them. He let them make a, a, an idol image. These Christian rap artists are taking their 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 cues from the world who worships the, the devil. They're taking their cues from them. If they can't, and, and many of them, <clears throat> I will say, are still listening to these secular artists. 
They're still listening to their music. That's why they would take those secular artists beats and try to put, you know, a Christian terminology on them and, 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 and use their beat as their own. All right. The Bible says a bad tree can't bring forth good fruit. If the root is bad, the, 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 the fruit is going to be bad. So anyway, when I say that the Christian rap artists are harboring the same spirit of the hip hop culture of the hip hop, because hip hop is a religion. It's rebellious and refuses correction. Look at the hip. Look at what's going on in hip hop. Oh, you can't you can't, can't tell these guys nothing because they got money. Can't tell them nothing. They refuse correction. So when a Christian, a uh, brother and sister in the Lord is trying to warn these Christian rap artists to, to quit mixing with the world and quit compromising and everything, they don't even want to hear it. Even if you're sharing scripture with them, they don't want to hear it. They refuse correction. They refuse the authority of scripture. They refuse it because they want to do what they want to do. They want to rebel. That's why many of them don't even have a church home. They're not submitted to no to no pastor or, or anyone. Or they got somebody that's far off in the distance that they can call on the phone that they say, "Oh, that's my that's my uh, that's my accountability." Whatever. N no, it's not, because you're not in the midst of, of of that congregation where you can receive the word of God and be corrected and be rebuked by the word of God and be challenged by the word of God. And have fellowship with the with the saints, but but because they can't submit to authority, just like the hip hop rap artists can't, it's a spirit of rebellion. So they don't belong to them lo no local assemblies. Many of them don't. Okay, and the ones that do, they still not listen to their pastor because they still out there doing what they want to do, yoking up with the ungodly, yoking up with the, with the uh, with, with, with sinners. Didn't the Bible say that? Didn't the Bible say that? Uh, the love of the world is enmity towards God for all that's of the world. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of this world. Doesn't the Bible say you are you adulterers and adulterers? Do you not know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? What did it just say? You adulterers and adulteresses. Friendship with the world. Didn't Lecrae just say he was at them ditty parties? Aren't these, these gospel artists, uh, D1 and, and all these different ones, they're recording songs with, with cussing rapping artists? Friendship with the world? It's hatred towards God. It's ridiculous. Christian and rap artists always speak. This is something else I had the chance to write down. Doing good on time. Christian rap artists always speak against the church for, for being money hungry. You know, like the, the preachers of L.A., preachers of Atlanta, preachers of Detroit. <clears throat> Yet, the Christian and rap artists do the exact same thing, flaunting their vehicles, their shoes, parties they attend, and going on secular award shows like the Grammys, BET Hip Hop Awards, and their after parties, and even go on the Breakfast Club. So the very thing they're accusing, they're saying why they don't go to church and, and what's wrong with the church, calling the church whack. The very thing they're accusing the church of, they're doing the exact same thing. They're doing the exact same thing. Remember in Romans chapter 2, verse 21, it says, You then who teach others, do you not teach yourselves? You who preach against stealing, do you steal? You who forbid adultery, do you commit adultery? And then later on in that scripture, it says, I think around verse 24, it says, For the for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you. So they're sitting up here talking about what's wrong with the church and everything, but yet they're doing the exact same thing. That's why I quoted that scripture. You talking about you can't steal, but yet you stealing. You talking about the church is money hungry. The pastors are money hungry. The church is all for show and everything, but yet you doing the exact same thing. You going after the secular artists. You going to the BET and the, and the, and the Grammys. You you getting awards. You getting nominated and everything. You know why? Because your music ain't doing nothing. It ain't convicting nobody. So the world is going to love its own. And as a result, the word of God is blasphemed by these secular rap artists because of what you Christian rap artists are doing. 
Because of what you're doing, that's the reason why Kendrick Lamar and a Kanye West can get up there and put a, a, a crown of thorns on their head and act like they're being crucified and, and sit up there and exalt abortion, you know, uh, and, 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 and support these, these liberal uh, Democrats and everything. And they're blaspheming the word of God because of you. Because you, you got some of the same opinions and views that they got being pro-choice. Being, you know, for homosexuality. That's why you don't speak out against it. That's why you don't call it out. But you'll go on the breakfast club and, and bash the church and talk about Christians and everything because you're trying to appease, you know, uh, Charlemagne and his and his uh, host. All of those people are, are lost. Everything they're doing is is in none but but uh, filled with uh, 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 racist rhetoric, and they're they're lost. And you get on that show and you just trying to say everything you can to make yourself more marketable to that audience. So hopefully they can play your song on a radio station. <clears throat> the name of God is blasphemed by the secular artists because of what you so-called Christian rap artists and Christian musicians are doing. Because you're hooking up with them. They know, these, these these secular artists, they know good and well shouldn't no Christian be at no P. Diddy party. They know good and well shouldn't no Christian be at any of their parties. Because even if you show up, they ain't going to stop doing what they're doing. And they know you don't belong there. I'll keep going. You sing and rap about God, but go against his word, his Holy Spirit at the same time. You sing and rap about God, but you go against the Holy Spirit at the exact same time. That's why I say when they turn that their music off, when they're not recording that rap song, when they're not doing any of that stuff, all of a sudden you start seeing what's on their Twitter account, what's on their Facebook page, what's on their little YouTube channels and stuff. And it's, and it's, it's everything that goes against the word of God. Their views, their ideas. Their comments is showing you what's really on the inside of their heart. It's almost like if they can't rap, all of a sudden they just they just can't make sound they just can't make sound decisions. All right. So notice these Christian rap artists always speak against the church, even in their songs, like church clothes and all this other. But all their concerts are for the church or in the church venue, so they speak against the church. They come against Christians like myself or somebody else that's speaking, you know, the, the, the word of God and holding the word of God up to what they're doing. But yet all of their all their events are in some kind of church, church, church conference or some kind of uh, venue for the church. And they never go against the satanic secular rap music or its artists, but rather reference them in their songs in a positive way. Like they'll say a lyric and they'll be like, just like Jay and Eminem did on Renegade. <laughs> referencing Jay-Z, <coughs> referencing, rep, referencing Eminem for what? These people, these secular rap artists, they are enemies of Christ. They are enemies of the cross. And you're referencing them? You might as well say it just like Satan said on this rap song because that's who they're serving. You might as well say their father's name on your song if you're going to mention them. And these guys calling themselves Jehovah God and all this other stuff. Like, it's ridiculous. These, these secular rap artists telling people that they got demons in them. Beyonce and all of them, they say they got demons in them. But yeah, you're going to reference them on your song. Are you happy because they gave you a shout out on their song? You're on the devil's hit list. Because he's showing you, he's he's making a mockery of you. Marvin Sapp, oh, these guys are honoring me that they're using my song on a secular beat and doing a TikTok thing on you. You on you on the hit list, and what I say that is because you being targeted because you being foolish. So they really they calling you out for the hypocrites that you are. They are exposing you for the hypocrites that you are, because you would rather have them mention you. On their songs, using your music for their secular beats and stuff, for their secular videos and everything, rather than saying, "Hey, no, no, I, I have no dealing with them." You don't. You want to separate yourself from them. You want to co-labor co with them. All right. 
the they only these these uh Christian rap artists they only want what the world they only want the world's approval of them. It's just like Cain and Abel. Abel was like the church, standing for the truth and doing things God's way. Cain wanted to do things his way despite God's warning. And the Bible says Cain was of the devil and he slew his brother because his brother was right. So when Christians hold the word of God up to what these gospel musicians, what these Christian rap artists are doing, those Christian rap artists and gospel musicians, they become like Cain because we're rejecting what they're doing. The word of God rejects what they're doing. So what do they got to do? They got to go on a breakfast club. They got to go on some kind of secular talk show. They got to do their own podcast. They got to come against the church. They got to come against the ones that they say are their brothers and sisters. They got to come against them and attack them in order to feel better about themselves. That's what Cain did. He killed his own brother. Despite God's warning, look, do what your brother is doing. And I'll receive you, but if not, sin is waiting at the door and his desires to pounce on you like a demon. Because that hip-hop culture is rejected and it suffers, it, it, it's, it's, it's a spirit of rejection in these artists, in all those secular rap artists, that same spirit of rejection is in a lot of these, is in these Christian rap artists. I'm only talking about the ones that are here doing this stuff like that. That's sec that's recorded secular songs, putting that they pro-choice on their Twitter account or what their X account, whatever you want to call it, and, and line it up with liberal agendas, line it up with Kamala Harris and all that stuff. I'm talking about the, the ones that are doing it. That stuff. Now I have seen. Some Christian rap artists that came out. I mean, they blasting the secular music industry. They blasting and calling these secular artists out by name and what they're doing. One Christian rap artist that I, that I, that I like, and I can tell there's anointing when he's doing, he's doing this. And that's Jay Bryant from uh, EX Ministries. Because the, the, you can just tell the spirit of God is moving because of the, the, the music, the tone, and the lyrics that he's saying. And why, what, he's, what he's standing for. All right. Also, the image that he's projecting, he's not trying to look like the hip hop rap artist. He, he ain't got his hair all in the braids and stuff like that and got a uh, what they call a man bun way up here now and stuff and being all effeminate. No, this guy is this. this the, 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 the Holy Spirit is in his music. I believe that the album is called Christians, Christian Rap, too. So anyway. Uh. Yeah, so that's that's what these what that's what's going on. They're doing exactly what 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 Cain did when the when the brother when the, when when his brother Abel was offering the right worship up to God. Cain wanted to offer what he wanted to offer. These Christian rap artists they want to do what they want to do because they see what the world is doing. So here you go, God. We mentioning your name. We are doing all this other stuff, and all of a sudden, God, the, the word of God is going against what they're doing. They will come against and attack the church in a heartbeat because they want to do things the way they want to do it. They don't want to hear the Holy Spirit. They don't want to see what the word of God says about it. They want to say the name of Jesus. They want to wrap the name of Jesus Christ and they want to do it the way they want to do it, regardless of what the Bible says about it. It's a spirit of rebellion. And that's what happened. Rebellion and rejection work together because when people are rejected, they start rebelling against authority. They rebel against the word of God. They rebel against, you know, uh, 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 laws and, and, and boundaries and stuff. They want to rebel against it. That's the reason why you see a lot of these young people misbehaving in school, misbehaving in, even in, in, in churches, misbehaving in the community because they have a spirit of rebellion on them because they're listening to their music that opens them up to the demons of rebellion. That's why they're able to kill and have no remorse for it. Go right, get locked up at juvenile, go right back out, do the exact same thing again. But you go as a Christian artist, you're gonna put the very artists they listen to that's talking about the killing, you're gonna put the you're gonna record songs with them. Because they said they not that's the only song they didn't cuss on. You can <laughs> it don't matter if you cuss or not. That spirit, that evil spirit in you is still in you. 
you can say the, the perverted stuff without cussing. So it, it's just, it's crazy. These Christian rap artists, they only want what the world's, they only want the world's approval of them. It's just like Cain and Abel. I'm reading this part again. Abel was like the church, standing for the truth and doing the things God's way. Cain wanted to do things his way despite God's warning. And the Bible says Cain was of the devil. And he slew his brother because his brother was right. The Bible says Cain was of the devil. Because he wanted to do things his way, disregarded God's warning. And that's what these Christian rap artists and these gospel singers are doing. They disregard what the word of God says because they want to do things their way. They got their own record label. They, and I, this is the other thing I don't understand. How you got a Christian record label, all of a sudden Christian artists don't even want to deal with your record label no more. They leaving it because of shady stuff. But anyway... They got their own uh, uh, record label. They want to do they do their own thing. The Bible says because God rejected Cain, he was of the devil. He was a murderer. What happened when they when uh, it was time for um, when they were about to bring Jesus before Pontius Pilate? They were the people wanted Barabbas to be free. Barabbas was a murderer. These Christian rap artists will defend these secular artists that promote murder that promote destruction of their own race, that exalt and glorify killing, murdering, and shooting the gangster lifestyle, but these Christian rap artists will defend them every chance they get, but they will come against the church every chance they get. These Christian artists attack the church that tries to tell them to turn away from, the, turn from their ways while those believers are telling them and doing what is right in warning the rap artists. So the, the so the people of God are trying to warn these Christian rap artists to turn away from the, the what what they're doing, the practices that they're doing, the places that they're going, the things that they're collaborating co collaborating with. But yet those are those Christian artists will attack the believers. They will attack the Christians. The ones that they're supposed to be their brothers and sisters, they will attack them. All right. Remember, the Bible also says that Satan entered Judas. Judas sold Christ out to fit in with his enemies that were tied to the government and the those religious leaders. OK, today, Christian rap artists join with the enemies of Christ who are also pro-choice in exchange for money. They're selling Christ out. They're selling Christ out. And joining with the enemies of Christ to come against the body of Christ. See, one thing these Christian rap artists don't want, they don't want accountability. They don't want accountability. They, they will buck and scream and kick and howl and everything and, and say their statements and try to twist the scriptures to, to come against being held accountable by the word of God. Both instances with Judas and uh, Cain. In both of those instances, the vessels that slew the brother and sold out Christ, the Bible specifically says the devil used them. The Bible says Cain was of the devil. Judas Iscariot, the devil entered him. And in both instances, Cain slew his brother that was righteous. Judas betrayed Christ who was righteous. So what we see right there is a common theme that the ones who want to do things for gain, for money, for fame, and to do things their own way and reject the word of God, they are being used by the devil with a Christian title on it. Let that sink in. When an artist, a Christian rap artist, a gospel musician, musical artist want to disregard the word, and even Kirk Franklin came out and said, I could care less what church folk got to say about me. I could care less. When they get to that point and they want to record songs and be on these secular, nasty artist album, and they want to do things the way they want to do them, it's because the devil has entered them. They will go against the church. They will yoke up with the enemies of Christ for fame, for fortune, for the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And I'm telling you, if you're a Christian artist, a gospel musician, whatever, you better repent. 
you better repent because you're going to have your place in the lake of fire with the very ones you don't yoke yourself up with and then expose uh, 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 children and teenagers to. You better repent. This is how serious this stuff is. All right. Bottom line is these artists want what Satan gives his children. That's what they want. The rich, the fame, the notoriety from the world. That's what Satan gives his children. That's what that's what he tempted Jesus with. Didn't uh, hey, hey, if you bow to me, I'll give you all these kingdoms for they were given to me. I'll make you famous. These Christian rap artists will even move to certain cities to advance their career opportunities in rapping. They're moved to in Atlanta because they want to be next to Ludacris and, and uh, 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 what's the other guy? Jermaine Dupree and all of them. They want to further their career. They move there for, for, an, for intentional purposes and reasons to, to, to help uh, boost their, their Christian rap career. All right? Christian rap artists will always try to rap about Christ, but when the beat is off and the music stops, their social media posts support pro-choice because they had abortions. That's why they won't speak out against it. They won't say it was wrong what I did. They will just say and go right along with the Liberal Party and try to make excuses for it and stuff. They will never call it a sin. When you see an artist or you see a minister or anybody on YouTube, whatever that's saying, and administering the word of God, and they can't speak against the LGBT agenda, they can't speak against uh, abortion, it's because they're in, they have some kind of connection to it, or they've done those acts themselves. There's no, they, they, this is not even a tiptoe, the, the Bible is very black and white on this issue. So for anyone to try to stutter while they're doing the interview or or get choked up and try to, oh, well, I don't know everything about the Bible. I don't know. I, you know, I just know I'm still learning. I'm still evolving. They are lying. They're trying to save face and they're trying to keep that record contract that they got going or they're trying to keep that book deal that they got going. I seen this one guy. Oh, my goodness. I forgot his name. But he was talking about, he was doing an interview. He was talking about how some uh, he was attending a church. I think it was in Oklahoma somewhere. And he was attending the church and he said uh, he didn't understand why the pastor didn't ever address, you know, <clears throat> the whole LGBT thing and uh, abortion thing and stuff like that. He just didn't. It was always grace, grace, grace. He said, why is he never addressing sin and stuff? And so one of the leaders of the church said, hey, well, you know, he can't do that because of his book deal. He said a book deal. He said, "Yeah, he got a, a a book deal, and then when he has a book deal, you they 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 make these guidelines where you can't mention or you cannot address or speak against certain things." And he's like, "Well, he left the ministry because of that." But anyway, that's what these Christian rap artists. That's why they don't speak out against stuff because of the contracts, because of the covenants that they have, the record deals that they have. Even though they saying they got their own record label, all that money is coming in from somewhere. There's a big brother, you know, uh, uh, business that they got that record label under. Okay. Sometimes they may have like a, uh, I guess, like a Sony. Sony may have a, you know, record label under them that's Christian and a secular, you know, artist, a record label under them that's, that's you know, secular, whatever. But you can't, because y'all say under the same umbrella, you can't speak against the lifestyle of the other one. Covenants. What fellowship does light have with darkness? What fellowship does a believer have with a non-believer? That word fellowship is, is also can mean exchange. What exchange do they have? And matter of fact, it says, and for those that want to try to, you know, uh, twist that scripture, it, it specifically says, what fellowship does Christ have with Belial or the devil? And it's a clear cut answer. Absolutely nothing. He has absolutely nothing in collaboration with the devil at all. Just like a Christian cannot collaborate with all these interfaith movements, how are you going to be a part of an interfaith movement where you promote the kingdom of God and these other faiths or these other religions are, trying to, are deceived and leading folks to hell, but you want to have an interfaith coalition or be a part of this coalition with many different faiths. 
it's, 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 it's dumb and it goes against the word of God and it's foolishness and you're going to be held accountable by God if you continue to remain in organizations like that because you're trying to promote peace or you're trying to, you know, help bring peace to the streets. You're trying to bring peace to the streets with the demons that are leading souls to commit the wickedness in the streets. It's crazy. Their views go against the Bible. And in their interviews, they do not say what the Bible says. They say what the world agrees with. Many of them twist the scripture to condone what they're doing. Just like Lecrae did when he said he went to the Diddy party. And he tried to declare Psalms, you know, chapter one. They're deceived. These guys are deceived. They're liars. You know, D1, you, they're out there recording with the, with the game. And then try to come against hip hop. You, that's, that's, that's straight up hypocrisy. That's that's being a hypocrite. Okay, you trying to call out hip hop and everything, and the hip hop secular music. They can't do better. I think on one of his statements on that Breakfast Club video, he said, oh, oh, "You got to do better and try to call out the industry and everything." You recorded with one of them. Now look, some of these guys they did the stuff in the past. They was probably was you, you know young coming up, repent. That's it, you know, it's forgiven under the blood and stuff. But don't sit up here and continue on doing the same thing. Don't keep doing the same thing and condoning. And, and, and the other thing is as a lot of these guys and gals are friends with each other. Who's holding each other accountable? You see these guys, they, they, you know, they still a part of these group fraternities. You see them still recording songs with a secular artist and everything. Who's holding them accountable to it? If that's your 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 buddy, your rapping buddy, or whatever, are you calling? Are you telling them to repent for that stuff and take that stuff down? I mean, what kind of accountability is that? So I wanted to take the time, man. I went I went over again. I wanted to take the time and, and, and break that down because these Christian rap artists are showing you. And even these gospel artists are showing you what the broad way of destruction looks like and how to get to hell doing the things that they're doing. Because they're going to keep doing it because they keep getting money. They keep getting, you know, uh, the crowds, you know, to, to fill out the stadiums and everything. And just in these, you know, some of these uh, leaders are just giving them the platform to do whatever. I think... Um, there was a, a, a one of this if this conference took place I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna share something because I think I don't know if KB went to it this uh, gospel rap artist named KB if he was a part of it, but I don't know if this if this conference took place and it was called Exodus into Exodus into Babylon or something like that in other words it was like almost a gender affirming uh, Christian conference and KB was performing there but I don't know if it took place or not so I'm gonna look I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up. Uh, and and kind of uh, 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 find out, but uh, if it did, and he performed there, and because I, I know they had a, you know, they always got to have these open table, round table discussions, you know, with <clears throat> transgenders or somebody that's in that lesbian or homosexual lifestyle. Now, if they got delivered and came out of it, that's something. But why? This is what I don't get. Why do you have to have a round table discussion with 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 murderers? With people that cheated on their wife and adulterers, do you do you ever see a roundtable discussion with them? With people that that that, that used to be murderers and stuff like that? No, they never do that. They only do that with the LGBT transgender movement. Why is that? Because that movement is being protected by law, and so they are afraid. In order to, in other words, they are afraid of these uh, these group of people that are living that lifestyle. And they, they, they want to try to, oh, that's why they always put that caveat. Oh, we, we, we love homosexuals. We love, if, do they ever say, hey, we love murderers. Oh, we love thieves. We love thieves. They don't ever say stuff like that. They always, be, people nowadays are always trying to say something to appease to this group of people because they're fearful of how they might take their words and use them against them in a lawsuit or bring some, you know, news media outlet to them in order to persecute the Christian. But Jesus Christ said, listen, blessed are you 
when men speak evil of you for my name's sake. Blessed are you when you are persecuted for my name's sake. In other words, you don't say and do things to uh, appease a group of people that want to live in sin. Why you have that? Why is it at a, 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 a Christian conference? Do all of a sudden you got to have a roundtable discussion about sexual identity issues? What kind of mess is that? That that doesn't even make sense. Do you have to have a roundtable discussion with the Hindus or with the Muslims? Do you got to have a roundtable discussion with cannibals? Or people that uh, that are in bestiality and all this other stuff. You got to have a roundtable discussion with them, and you because you know that is one hundred percent wrong. So why you got to have a roundtable discussion with LGBTQ to to make it a safe place to have these discussions for what? Are you going to tell them to repent of their sins? They need to, or are you going to no? See what the church needs to do is the church needs to watch its approach in trying to reach these people. It's nothing but compromise. It's, it's, it's careless, and these conferences are meaningless. You know, conferences like that, that do stuff like that, they're meaningless and they have weak leaders that's, that's, that's leading them. Beta males, that's, that's leading them. They're weak. They're weak and they're fearful because they care more about the opinions of people that are out there living in sin than they do the word of God. Did, did, did Paul write the Roman, Romans chapter one and say, well, we, we got to have a round table discussion with, uh, with the king, even though he castrated a boy and married him, dressed him up like a girl and married him. We, we, we need to have the churches. Y'all need to start having round table discussions with people in that lifestyle. He said, no, these are people are worthy of death. Not only do they approve, not only do they do those things, but they approve of those who practice such things. He says they are worthy of death. Which minister out there holding these conferences and stuff will stand up boldly and, and say that? None of them. And also in that in that Romans chapter one, that list disobedient the parents and the authority and all this stuff, this is what the rap music is doing. This is what they teach. So I want to take that time and share that with you. Man, it was an hour. My goodness. I want to take that time to, and share this with you. Uh you see these these artists, they could care less what the church and what the word of God has to say about it. And I hope they repent. I hope they stop doing this stuff, stop recording with these, you know, uh, secular artists and stop, you know, trying to uh, be like the world and act like the world and uh, and love the world and and have fellowship with darkness. It's like what the scripture says. They're doing the exact opposite because of their musical ability and their talent. But guess who else had musical ability? And 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 and, and, and they, these angels followed him. The devil. They hooked up with Satan because he had a plan. And you can look at Satan being like them secular artists, and the Christian artists are the, are, were the angels. And they hooked up with Satan because he had a plan. They all got kicked out because they refused the ways of God, and they followed Satan. They followed Lucifer and got kicked out of heaven. You Christian rap artists, you gospel musicians, you're doing the exact same thing. You're hooking up with the devil's children and they're going to lead you directly to their father and you're going to be in eternity with them if you don't repent and quit being disobedient to the word of God. Now I'll ask you this. Did the Holy Spirit tell you to hook up with those secular artists? God bless you, love you in Jesus' name.